I will be talking on brachytherapy in prostate cancer part 2. Last time I have given you an overview on the investigations uh, reaching a diagnosis in uh, uh, diagnosing a CA prostate. And once we have diagnosed CA prostate, how do we go out in, in prostate cancer? And brachytherapy is a very well established modern technology to treat localized prostate cancer and I will take you through the history, the indications, the contraindications, the, the complications and the results of uh, the uh, treatment and what all equipment is required and Hinduja hospital is the first hospital to introduce this uh, treatment in India and at present uh, this is the only hospital which provides this minimally invasive procedure. So to start off with, I will give you a brief about history. Now, Sir Alexander Graham Bell was the one who um, told that we should, he wrote a letter to Dr. Sir saying that we should be able to put in some enclosed applicator into the tumor site or the heart of the tumor so that the radiation or the ionizing radiation can take care of the tumor instead of giving from outside and there the era of brachytherapy started and thereafter in prostate especially it started in between 1915 or so where in radium needles or active radium introduced into the prostate retro uh, retropubic uh, approach where they used to stabilize the prostate uh, as shown in the diagram and radium needles would be put in for a particular duration and then the in a particular fashion and then it would be removed. So since then uh, there are a lot of changes which has taken place and if we talk about what are the recent trends in treating as such prostate therapy like whether it is distant or metastatic or localized surgery uh, takes a big chunk of it that is 50 percent and uh, radiation both put together around 25 percent that is brachytherapy and uh, external beam whereas weight and watch cryo adjuvant hormonal therapy all about forms the rest of that is about 20-22%. Now if we talk about only localized, uh, treating localized prostate cancers, we talk about uh, external beam therapy about 36%, surgery around 26% uh, and brachytherapy has formed a good chunk. This was presented by Nguyen et al in 2011 uh, a journal, uh, about 36% of them are using brachytherapy world over. It could be, I'll tell you the various forms which are available. Now, this is something which everybody should be aware, uh, you know, where what is required for tumor control and what is required for controlling the complications. So if we are able to keep these curves within the required limit, then we can avoid complications and thereby we can have a good quality of life post treatment. So this is the sigmoid curve which everybody talks about where at particular dose we can control the uh, tumor but as we increase the dose, we have a more chance of probability of complications. So hence we should be within our limits, not be over uh, treating overboard to achieve a tumor control. Why bother? Brachytherapy is a lot of work, time consuming, will require a lot of man, man, manual uh, power, then uh, the resources and it does not pay well whoever does this procedure. But brachytherapy allows relation beyond that is achievable uh, in any form of uh, radiation therapy, mainly the external beam radiation therapy which is not invasive. 
and it allows great conformity and sparing of the adjacent surrounding structures namely ladder and the rectum. There is higher efficacy, less toxic and less risk of second malignancy because of radiation. We, because when we use radi external beam radiation therapy there is a chance that we can uh, treat the uh, tissues which are adjacent to the prostate. Now there are risk groups, this risk group are divided according to the uh, extent of the tumor outside the prostate which is it can spill over outside the prostate capsule and that's how these uh, risk groups are classified. These are there are about three to four uh, classifications but most commonly are used by Seattle group and the Mount Sinai from the Damico group. In low risk you have PSA which is less than 10 nanograms per ml and Gleason score of 2 to 6. Gleason score as uh, I have told you in the last talk it is something to do with the grade of the tumor which is found on histology and of course the stage T1C to T2B that means either limited to one lobe or both the lobes and a similar definition is given by Mount Sinai that means the risk of X, the disease going out of the prostate capsule is very low so hence these tumors are very amenable to brachytherapy alone or surgery alone. So this is the group which everybody would like to uh, treat and expect a longer uh, survival results. Now intermediate risk we have something between low and high risk where a PSA can be more than 10 or mm -hmm. less than 20 and a Gleason score of 7 or more than T2B that means it can be both lobes and just you know, extending outside or uh, limited to both the lobes of the tumor. In a high risk there is a very high chance that is as high as about 60 percent and above for the tumor to spill out of the prostate cancer extending on to the seminal vesicles which are adjacent. So the two or three factors are either PSA is higher than 20 nanograms per ml or Gleason score is higher than 7 or T3 tumors which is the tumor is spread beyond the prostate capsule. So in these cases definitely permanent brachytherapy which I will be telling you in detail what is permanent brachytherapy will not be useful instead we can use temporary brachytherapy along with external beam therapy. Now what are the effects of dose I mentioned to you that we can escalate the dose so what is the advantage of escalating the dose. Now you can see in this, this is the magnified part of the dose distribution. The red is the tumor and the white is the dose which is sharp dose fall off and the dose within the uh, prostate is as high as about 1.5 times than the usual dose. So hence we expect a long term survival better than only with external beam radiation therapy. And the rectum which is adjacent which is as close as about 5 millimeters below the prostate is getting only about less than 100 percent. So thereby we expect less side effects. Now there is something called as radiobiology. This is the radiation dose and what it does to the biology of the cells either tumor to or the normal cells is called radiobiology. And this whenever radiation is given they are of different energies and different energies kill different cells. So it is considered that alpha by beta that means alpha there is certain number of cells or certain dose kills a particular part of the tumor and by beta it is a ratio the number of cells killed from one energy to another energy by the radiation is given for prostate in the range of 1.5 to 2 whereas in other tumors like breast cancer or cervical cancer or any other epithelial cancer it is around 9 or 10 which encourages us to use hypofractionation that means we use a higher dose per fraction. The normal fractionation used in radiation therapy is 2 gray and if you use anything more than 2 gray per day is called hypofractionation and I will tell you what kind of doses we look at. 
Now in uh, radiation therapy this diagram shows that the blue one shows the um, x-rays or photons or external beam therapy which has a got a quite a good peak but the dose fall off this entire region gets a very high dose that means approximately about 5 to 10 centimeters gets uh, wherever you are planning across uh, the tumor tissues radiation is delivered whereas if you see the yellow one this is the yellow one where the BRAC peak that means the peak of radiation is deliver to one particular place and see the fall off. So the fall off is sharp hence the adjacent structures do not get but we should be careful that we hit the right tumor or right target at the right place. And the pink uh, graph Bragg peak shows the proton whereas there is some amount of radiation dose but not as high as the external beam x-ray dose. So there is still sparing of uh, significant normal tissues when we use protons. Now moving on in brachytherapy, we use seeds which is called popularly known as permanent brachytherapy. These seeds are as uh, big as a rice grain. The length is approximately about 5 uh, mm and the width is about 0.5 mm and it delivers uh, the dose distribution is as described here and these iodine is absorbed on a vinyl and it's in encapsulated by platinum and this is how these seeds look individual and these seeds are dropped into the prostate using multiple uh, various instruments. For patient selection, there are three criteria which we have to use. There is oncological criteria. Oncological criteria, as I said, it should be low risk. That means the disease should be limited to the prostate. How do we do that? We have to depend on PSA, Gleason score and the tumor stage. And if all these criteria uh, permits us to do, then we should uh, explain the patient about the possible chances of recurrence that in percentage wise and uh, low risk uh, tumors are the best for permanent. And if it is not low risk, we might have to add external beam therapy to uh, these patients. So it becomes a boost, either permanent seed or HD or a temporary brachytherapy becomes a part of the treatment for intermediate and high risk. The technical criteria is the tumor should not be too big. So it's a relative criteria. If it is too big, more than 60 cc, the number of seeds required and the accessibility to drop the seeds inside the prostate may be hindered. And uh, we should take care of this. Uh, functional criteria is the many a times the international prostatic symptom score which talks about the urinary function and the uh, like um, intermittent blockage or pre-flow of the urine or dribbling of the urine if there is a large component of the benign prostatic hypertrophy we should be careful it cause a significant urinary bother post uh, brachytherapy so we have to check for these things now talking about the uh, difference in uh, LDR and HDR, if we talk about the dose distribution, this is a linear source. If this is the seed, the adjacent 5 mm or so will get the dose. Suppose if there is a 1 cc uh, tissue and you put in one seed, in that tissue except the seed alone, adjacent uh, tissue gets about uh, 5 mm gets the radiation dose. So if you have a 30 cc approximately you put in somewhere between 30 to 40 seeds to get a ideal dose distribution depending on that these can be planned in the uh, on the computer and can be seen now this is the hdr iridium 192 source which we use as a stepping source that means from one place to another place it moves at a particular speed and we can control that remotely and there is very limited a radiation dose to the personnel who work with it and this can these are the dose distributions which can be uh, achieved 
so you can you have more liberality or uh, liberty to use these uh, uh, HDR uh, or stepping source so that you can shape your doors whichever way you want. So it has been shown that this is also a very effective method to treat localized prostate cancers in the past 10, 12, 10 to 12 years. Now talking about the differences, this low dose rate and high dose rate, what I mean by is low dose rate, that means the dose delivered per hour is the dose rate. So it is less than around 60 centigrade per hour is called low dose rate and a high dose rate is usually around more than 12 gray per hour. So which is a very high dose. Now low dose rate usually is the permanent uh, brachytherapy which is called that means these seeds are dropped into the prostate and it's forgotten. Now once these seeds are uh, dropped into the prostate gland as designed, these remain there forever in the patient's body and which are very inert. These seeds are coated by platinum and these do not react with the tissues once the radiation is over. The radiation is delivered over between three months to six months and after six months they generally there is no dose. Now it's usually one procedure which takes about two to three hours and it as I said earlier if it is intermediate risk it is better to combine with external beam radiation therapy or it can be used alone where the dose is delivered in a higher dose and it's a daycare procedure that means patient comes in the morning gets admitted and the procedure is done the patient is kept in the daycare till the anesthesia wears off and then the patient is discharged. So the patient can get back to work the following day. So there is absolutely no time wasted and there is no cut on the body and the patient tolerates well. Now what we should uh, talk to the patient is the complications which are required uh, to be told to the patients, the post procedure complications and these are, uh, these will be explained uh, in the next few minutes. Now the difference of high dose rate brachytherapy is that it delivers, as I said, it delivers a very high dose in a short time and it's temporary. That means the needles will be remaining for about uh, one hour or so by the time we plan and this radiation do, uh, usually isotope is called iridium-192 or cobalt-60 and it is connected to the needles. It goes through the needles and delivers radiation dose in, in the prostate and comes back into the machine. Now this can be one or two procedures. It depends on the institute policy. Mm. All these have shown similar results but it's only the technique uh, a little differs. It can be one to several treatments. Several treatments may be sometimes may vary between five to eight and if it is a monotherapy as I said again a low risk prostate cancer can be treated with temporary brachytherapy mm. alone. But if it is intermediate risk or high risk, it has to be combined with the BRT. And since most of the low risk patients are taken care by surgery, the radiation therapy is mostly for the locally advanced and which has to be combined with EBRT. And we have a series which I will give you the update today. Now again, the brachytherapy, if it is a single procedure, it, has, it can be done as a daycare or if you are planning for seven treatments the patient has to be kept as an inpatient with the needles in for approximately two to three days depending on the number of treatments. Now the brachytherapy team includes uh, radiation oncologist, the medical physicist, the nurse, radiation therapist, anesthetist, the urologist many times. Now radiation oncologist decides the number of seeds or the dose to be delivered to the organ and keeping a check on the normal tissues which are uh, dose limiting organs and medical physicist knows how to plan the dose in consultation with radiation oncologists uh, and the uh, oncologist this both of them together decide which is the best plan nurse obviously takes care of the requirement of the OT uh, procedure Radiation therapy is also included because he knows best how to position the patient, what all 
uh, equipment to be used during the procedure. Anesthetist again is involved because of uh, the procedure requires anesthesia, either GA or uh, spinal anesthesia. And the urologist mainly is involved in permanent rec therapy where uh, he or she will do a post procedure cystoscopy to see if there are any seeds in the urethra or the bladder if by mistake if they are dropped in there. Now the equipment basically we use a ultrasound machine it's a portable one which we have to have a biplanar uh, probe where we can see axial and the sagittal planes so that we see the uh, prostate in axial and uh, sagittal uh, way and if you are introducing the needle we can both ways at a click of a button we can see both angles. The stepper is a device which allows the rectal probe to be attached to the stabilizing mechanism. This is the cradle I will show you in a few minutes and the movements we can do because the surgeon or the radiation oncologist who is doing the implant his hands will be free once we fix the probe. So in a stepwise fashion we can move, move the probe. Now uh, coming on to the MIC applicator this is used for something called as uh, dropping the seeds. This is like a gun. This is the cartridge where about 15 seeds will be loaded and kept. If you place it here once we pull the uh, trigger the seed falls into the uh, zone where we can push it into the needle and it's once it's connected into the needle which is inside half inside and half outside the uh, the triggers pushed in and the, the seeds fall into the required uh, place and the MIC applicator retraction once we are in some plane we can retract as per either it's 5 mm or 4 mm or whatever distance we need to. Now continuing with the equipment there is a cradle for the ultrasound probe as shown here and it's the stepper which moves in usually the probe is inside the rectum and we can move the uh, probe in or out depending on which plane you are. There is a grid which is usually placed on the cradle and this is akin to the perineal skin where through this grid which is shown on the ultrasound uh, image along with the prostate can tell us which uh, hole will we should insert the needle and drop the seed or just the needle. So this is called the grid. Now other steps of brachytherapy is first is uh, we usually prefer spinal anesthesia so the patient do, do, not, do not move uh, after the procedure till we treat the patient. So we prefer spinal anesthesia and gives a good pain relief. And the patient, once the anesthesia is given, patient is positioned in a high lithotomy so that the pubic arch interference is not an issue. Once this is not an issue, uh, patient will does not uh, have to be repositioned. So better to use a high lithotomy position to avoid uh, changes. Uh, regarding the truss probe, uh, this is on the stepper and the probe is inside the rectum and once it is in the rectum we, we have to uh, capture images in the axial fashion. In this way the bladder is uh, cranial and the template is caudal akin to the skin. This is the skin and this is the urethra we can get the images and this is the rectum where the probe is. Truss stands for transrectal ultrasound and we can take images in 5 uh, mm steps and uh, this is how the images will be seen from the base that is the bladder we are starting off the prostate this is again prostate images with the central urethra and this is the apex. Now the orientation of the needles as shown in the diagram this will be craniocaudal and we have to take care that we do not puncture into the urethra and if by intention if we have to go into the bladder base I don't think so it's a problem minimal bleeding can occur post procedure in the 
urination on in the catheter. Now this is how needles look on the uh, ultrasound image and multiple unit uh, needles are utilized and on the planning system you um, identify the needles and you can make a plan. Now talking about uh, once we put the how do we describe the dose. Now usually dose given is approximately I use 10 gray per fraction after external beam therapy into two procedure that means 20 gray we deliver in two fractions and this is the this is the jack is through guidelines which we also tend to follow which the maximum dose is to the red that is 10 gray and the green gets about 80 percent and the rectum should get less than 80 percent of the prescribed dose that means if you prescribe uh, uh, 10 gray 8 this should be less than 8 gray and urethra should not receive more than 12 gray. Now most of the cancers are uh, arises from the periphery of the prostate and uh, though so the 10 gray is taken care that uh, it should cover this uh, region. Now once the plan is ready then we connect these needles which are uh, inserted due, uh, with anesthesia and the patient is moved to the adjacent room which is well protected there is no radiation this is a explanation of the HDR brachytherapy where radiation dose is delivered between 5 to 10 minutes and uh, where these tubes are connected to the machine which is here partially seen and after the procedure the needles the template everything is removed and patient is put in spine position and shifted to the wall. Now talking about low dose rate these are the guidelines where uh, if you are combining with external beam therapy we usually give about 110 gray uh, that depends on the volume how many seeds to be implanted if uh, it is only monotherapy that means no external beam therapy which is not included in the early risk prostate cancers then a dose of 145 gray is delivered. We use iodine 125 seeds so the dose is 145 gray and if it is combined with external beam it is 110 gray so the number of seeds usually between 50 to 90 seeds if it is uh, monotherapy it is high and if it is combined with external beam therapy it is low. Again we have for uh, low dose rate the dose that means 110 gray or 145 gray depending on the use of external should cover 100% of the PTV that is 90% of the dose that means if it is 110 gray at least um, at least 100 gray should cover the 100 percent of the volume and if it is 145 gray at least 130 gray should cover the 90 percent of volume and urethra one of urethra should receive less than 150 percent and rectum 100 percent of rectum should receive less than 5 percent of the rectal wall that means you can't deliver 145 gray to more than 5 cc of the rectum. Now here are some of the results. If you notice this graph on one side we have treatment success that is percentage treatment PSA progression free and the x axis you have the number of years from treatment. Now above 90 where there is only seed or EBRT plus seeds that is external beam plus seed is the highest results in low risk as I said low risk means the PSA less than 6. Uh, T1 or T2 and uh, Gleason score less than 6. So surgery is comparatively inferior. These results are from Prostate Cancer Results Study Group which was published in 2009 and the external beam also has got not as good as uh, brachytherapy or brachytherapy with uh, external beam when they combine. Now talking about EBRT plus HDR in the high risk group uh, there is a significant difference that is biochemical no evidence of disease that means PSA progression fee is somewhere between 60 to 78 percent over uh, 
two to six years. Now different uh, definitions of PSA recurrence and significantly less uh, toxicity of GI or GU. Now again external beam plus brachytherapy boost. Now we have evidence from uh, Mount Vernon group of uh, level 1 evidence where phase 3 EBRT versus EBRT HDR has been proven that uh, biochemical recurrence is free over about 10 years is far better than EBRT alone this high risk prostate cancers. So it is better to add always um, brachytherapy boost along with the external beam and hormones for this high risk group. Now uh, there are some complications differences among these patients. This is one of the studies which shows that radical retropubic prostatectomy versus brachytherapy for low risk is a prospective study and uh, urinary function which is a significant problem post radical uh, prostatectomy either open or robotic. It is severe in 5% and mild in 13.4% and urinary uh, irritation is 80% and whereas is 20% in uh, brachytherapy group patients at 6 months. This study was published by the uh, Giberti group et al in World Journal of Urology in 2009. Again when it comes to sexual function 58% uh, had post radical prostatectomy preservation and 68% uh, after uh, brachytherapy. I'm sorry, 58% and 68% after one and five years in the radical retropubic prostatectomy group, and 68% and 78%. So a significantly 10% difference in uh, brachytherapy group when compared to um, radical prostatectomy group. Now oh, this is one of the studies done by the. Uh, quality of life and spirit study which came from Princess Margaret Hospital where patient was uh, studied post radical uh, prostatectomy and or uh, brachytherapy where urinary leakage was significantly higher as high as 20% in the radical prostatectomy group and brachytherapy group had almost less than 5%. And when it came to urinary stream again radical prostatectomy did badly as high as 30% and brachytherapy grew by about 15% and weak stream was almost uh, similar not much of difference between radical prostatectomy and brachytherapy. But uh, when we have pain and burning it's almost similar so you weak stream and pain and burning always almost similar but not uh, urinary leakage and urinary stream where radical prostatectomy did badly. Now there is one more study which showed that physician reported urogenital toxicity grade 2 or 3 uh, grade 2 or 3 it's much more in the radical prostatectomy than in the LDR group and patient reported outcomes of sexual and urinary were better for LDR brachytherapy group. This was a study where only the physicians or uh, surgeons who have undergone therapy were interviewed and uh, the uh, statistics were uh, judged. So uh, it, this study clearly shows that there is less side effects than uh, prostatectomy. Uh, what I have uh, not uh, touched upon is that the significant side effects is uh, for prostatectomy, post prostatectomy is the urinary incontinence. Urinary incontinence is post prostatectomy is significantly higher in the prostatectomy group and the urinary bother is sometimes cumbersome in the brachytherapy group which is in the first four weeks usually approximately after a month it subset significantly other than that uh, there is no dribbling nocturia is less there is no weak stream and patient is not on catheter patient can recover 
quickly after the procedure there is no uh, waiting time from the day of uh, procedure to recover and there is no significant time loss from the day of surgery or day of procedure to to the recovery period now just to tell you what is coming up for the future there is something called as robotic brachytherapy where many universities are trying along with mri where uh, robotic brachytherapy that means use a robotic uh, technology to insert the needles and drop in the seeds at a particular speed and uh, these are the three big names john john hopkins radboud university nimigen netherlands and the university medical center utrecht brussels now robotic brachytherapy either some of them are trying uh, ultrasound guided or some of them are trying mri guided and uh, possible applications focal primary treatment alone which is not in vogue as yet but people trying and boost on primary tumor or if there is a recurrence or uh, focal salvage and current competitors are cryo hypo laser but radiation has shown the best promise as of today thank you for uh, listening to me and if there are any questions i'll be thankful for uh, to for listening and i'll answer your questions and i'll be available on every thursday at 5 pm for virtual opd if there are any questions you are okay the question from uh, is can we lead a normal sexual life after brachytherapy the important thing is prior to brachytherapy uh, the patient or it should be assessed how good is the sexual function if it is already lost recovery is difficult but if a good sexual function or mainly erectile function is normal then uh, chances of uh, brachytherapy saving the erectile function is as high as 80 to 85% so in good hands we have got as high as 90% but even for people who have not done so many about 60 to 70% we can expect that patient will lead a normal sexual life Uh, another question is how successful or how what's the percentage of success after brachytherapy see again the brachytherapy alone that means low risk prostate cancer which is suited for if we do only brachytherapy and we expect as high as 90 to 95% over 10 years uh, biochemical recurrence free survival which is the same as in radical prostatectomy so the results are always the same it's the procedures are de decided depending on how the patient is convinced with the side effects so the success of percentage is always similar but when we do combine with external beam and uh, uh, either permanent brachytherapy or temporary brachytherapy the recurrence free survival is better now another question is what are the side effects 
as I said previously, the main side effects post brachytherapy is related to urine, that is urinary bother. There is some amount of uh, burning sensation if we are doing seeds for about say out of 100 about 20 to 30 will complain that there is burning sensation each time after passing urine and there may be repeated urination that is frequent urination in the first month and gradually over second month or third month it comes down significantly and they can lead a life but important thing is if there is significant urinary problem prior to the procedure it is better to explain the patient that the side effects may aggravate so this is one clarity one patient should have this the if the patient has prior problems with the urine that means the prostate gland or benign prostatic hypertrophy or the malignancy is quite high so choose to do both external beam plus uh, uh, brachytherapy either with seed or uh, HDR. So HDR has got lesser side effects uh, significantly less than permanent brachytherapy. So there is no other side effects related to rectum or other symptoms like uh, uh, nocturia or uh, pain or so. No, uh, question is are all stages of prostate cancer curable by brachytherapy or any other treatment? As I showed in my results, uh, if we add brachytherapy to external beam therapy in intermediate risk or later risk, that means in uh, stage 3 and stage 2, we get a better result than with external beam therapy alone. But we can use brachytherapy where a surgeon is decided for radical prostatectomy, same indication that is low risk prostate cancer. That means the PSA is less than uh, 10, Gleason score is less than 6 and uh, T1 or T2 stage. T1 or T2 is tumor 1 or tumor 2 depending on depending whether it is involved one lobe or two lobes. So in those stages only brachytherapy will we can do uh, brachytherapy and get as good a result as surgery. The question is what is the treatment for last stages of prostate cancer? Now last stages I understand that the tumor has spread to distant sites other than prostate mainly mainly if it has gone out of prostate into the lymph nodes or bones. If it has gone into the lymph nodes and if it is causing problem chemotherapy to some extent can help they can it can control for about a couple of months or couple of years but if it has gone to the bones gradually we can think of pain relief or uh, just giving some hormonal therapy to keep the patient comfortable as long as we can and uh, brachytherapy or external beam therapy is generally unless it causes some pain or obstruction to pass urine or uh, stool can be used in a shorter form mainly external beam not brachytherapy for if uh, very advanced disease. So this brachytherapy and external beam is uh, an eradicate fraction that is to control or to cure a disease is done only for localized prostate cancers. Thank you very much.